welcome learners in this module we are going to discuss a very important topic that is jurisdiction of cyber crime in india there are certain provisions that have been made on the issue of jurisdiction for cyber crimes and cyber investigations for example section 3 of ipc 1860 provides punishment for offences committed beyond india so naturally this brings cyber crimes along with its numerous issues concerning jurisdiction there are two distinct provisions relating to jurisdiction in sections 1 of 2 and 75 information technology act different principles are evolved at various points of time by different nations jurisdiction the courts in those nations assume jurisdiction on the basis of the place where the cause of action has arisen due to the peculiarity of the cyberspace internet and the well established principles of jurisdiction no longer provide clarity the courts however while acknowledging some of the challenges due to internet has also tried resolving certain issues based on well established judicial principles considering the entire issue of cyber crime jurisdiction from indian perception there is by far no established principles however the civil laws are well established whereas certain enhancements on the cyber laws are still on the way indeed it is really helpful the evolution of cyber crime case laws over the period of time and examine the said civil law jurisdiction they have taken a front stage in the indian scenario India being highly populated country of course a developing country has so many challenges compared to countries like USA and China developed countries they have better awareness and knowledge created among people regarding cyber law and information technology act people are more aware regarding their rights and privacy issues in developed countries they have separate rules regulations and laws to maintain and deal with the cyber sectors of the country providing security and taking care of the privacy aspects of their citizens however in india we have a separate act called information technology act of course that came into force only first time in the year 2000 and subsequent amendments in the year 2008 still it is not sufficient to manage all the it and cyber sectors from the indian perception it has both good as well as the challenging sides we saw some of the challenging sides in our previous discussions The IT Act amended during the year 2008 provided many reliefs regarding the cyber crimes to the common people of India by protecting them from different types of crimes for example voyeurism we too mentioned it under section 66E of IT Act another example is section 345C of IPC 1860 and the hacking mentioned under section 43 of information technology act of course all these have provided a comfortable platform for the citizens china and usa they had new cyber security law that has restrictions to conduct business in foreign companies and countries to protect their countries by controlling the cyber crime rates on the other hand India has to make some more efforts to improve their country's efficiency to provide better services and protection 
in cyber sector. For this, the Government of India in the year 2013 introduced a national cyber security policy. This is introduced with the aim of protecting information infrastructure by reducing the vulnerability issues and increasing the capabilities of safeguarding the country from cyber attacks and various other threats. India is currently working very hard to make the IT Act more efficient by adding amendments every now and then as in when there is a requirement that can also be enhanced in the near future. Our country is also becoming complete on par with other foreign developed countries as far as the cyber and IT protection sectors are concerned. Some of the helpful tips to keep one's identity, personal information and data secure from phishing emails Disposal of information property, ethics to be followed, locking and protection of devices are discussed in this section. They are the most common challenges almost every one of us are facing today. This can easily be handled with the best practices and the tips. First of all, let's take the phishing emails. Never respond to requests for personal information via email. Businesses will never ask for personal information through an email. Please do not enter personal information in a pop-up screen. Do not click on any links listed on in an email message and do not copy and paste the URL into the browser, from especially from unknown sources. Marking fishy emails as spams in Gmail will make it more likely to identify the future messages as spams for one and others with NMU accounts. Always use antivirus and anti-spyware software and update them regularly. Kindly destroy or the shared hard copy or the confidential documents that contain personal information such as social security numbers, credit card numbers, bank account numbers and other health records. Ensure one uses the right tools when destroying and disposing of personal information records or the one stored on a media or the one stored in a computer and the mobile devices. Do not engage in inappropriate conduct such as cyber bullying, cyber stalking or rude and hate and offensive messages and behaviors. Don't do something in cyberspace that is considered wrong or illegal, disturbing the individual or the organization or the country or in general in everyday life. Do not impersonate someone else as it is illegitimate to create sites, that is websites, pages or posts that seem to come from someone else. Adhere to copyright restrictions when downloading material from the internet. Give due respect to the creators. Do not use someone else's password or other identity information. It takes only a few seconds to secure one's computers and help protect it from unauthorized access. Lock down the computer every time while leaving the desk. Set up a screen saver that will lock the computer after a preset time period and once again asking for a password to log in back. 
if the computer used by more than one person, one may want to create individual accounts with unique login and password. Always choose a strong password. A good password should always include the uppercase letters, the lowercase letters, numerals, special characters, etc. Very difficult to guess. Do not set option that allows a computer to remember your password. Ask oneself, is it really necessary that to transport this sensitive information? If the answer is no, then please do not copy the information. Once again, for the mobile device as well, choose a strong password. Same way, a good password as we discussed as almost everything. Never use the same password for multiple devices, for multiple accounts and applications. Store your portable devices securely. When not in use, store the devices out of sight of people if possible in a locked drawer or a cabinet. So we have to protect our mobile devices with the use of passwords, be sure that all critical information is backed up, disable Bluetooth when it is not required, make sure that firewall and antivirus are up to date, record identity information such as the serial number and MISM and label the equipment if possible, report the loss or the theft of the device to the appropriate authorities as soon as or as immediate as possible. So these are some of the very important best practices and tips one can think of. Dear learners, this week course, of course the last week course on cyber security clearly discussed about the evidence of email and SMS, how it can be used as an evidence in the court. Various important acts like RBI Act, IPC Act, Money Laundering Act, they are important acts along with the cyber um, laws and the Information Technology Acts to protect or to ensure safe practices Finally, the jurisdiction and how where we are compared to other countries, um, cyber laws and information technology acts, etc. And finally, the best ethical practices one should always ensure to have a very safe operations in the cyberspace. Hope to meet you all again in some other course on MOOCs. Welcome. Thank you for the opportunity.